So to anyone who looks like me, know that you can achieve anything. Know that in this country and in Kentucky, all that matters are your values. From front runner to victor in a crowded primary, Kentucky's Attorney General Daniel Cameron is now the Republican nominee for governor. And it didn't take long for those races to be called. I hadn't even finished my snack. The projected winners for both parties were declared just after seven last night with a low statewide voter turnout of just 14 percent. Yeah, Jim is joining us right now in the studio to go over some of those big matchups. And Jim, this one was really, like Eric said, called very quickly. Yeah, and when you looked at the polling numbers heading into this primary election, this is kind of what you thought you were going to be seeing. This matchup right here for the second straight gubernatorial cycle, the attorney general facing off against the incumbent governor. Now, this Daniel Cameron was able to emerge from a very crowded Republican field with a pretty wide margin of victory. He ended up pulling in 48% of the Republican vote in what ended up being, again, a very low voter turnout election. Now, going into primary day, Cameron did have a pretty sizable lead over the rest of the field in the polls, but that lead just grew and grew as the results began to roll in. And honestly, if you were somebody that looked at those poll numbers, that result probably didn't surprise you. But what might have caught you off guard was that former UN Ambassador Kelly Kraft came in third after spending more than $11 million on her campaign. She finished behind Agricultural Commissioner Ryan Quarles by about 5% of the vote. Quarles delivered his concession speech from Lexington and called for unity amongst Republicans. We must all unite. We must all come together after tonight. Because if we are going to defeat Andy Bashir, we have all come together, and it starts right now. Speaking of the governor, Bashir cruised to the Democratic nomination in his primary, garnering 91% of the vote, with Jeff Young and Pepe Martin bringing in just 5% and 4%, respectively. So, come November, it will be Bashir versus Cameron. The two have already had a number of clashes in the, over the past four years over in the courts. Now, this next chapter is set to play out on the campaign trail as we head towards November. Eric, Haley. All right, Jim, thank you so much. Republican Kelly Kraft's stunning loss comes with a hefty price tag. Kraft spent nearly $11 million on her campaign. Bobby McSwine and senior photojournalist Alyssa Newton traveled to Lexington to see the end of such an aggressive campaign, which only won 17% of the vote. Good morning. Supporters here in Lexington were hopeful for a victory, but despite spending nearly $11 million on this campaign, Kraft never had the lead, hovering in third most of the night behind Daniel Cameron and Ryan Quarles. Kelly Kraft conceding the race in a room full of hopeful supporters. While it is true that I am disappointed this evening, but we have so much to celebrate. I know that our movement has had lasting impressions on Kentuckians across the Commonwealth. Kraft's campaign focused heavily on, quote, wokeism in schools. She went after the Kentucky Department of Education and Commissioner Jason Glass. And I'm hopeful that each and every child and grandchild here in Kentucky will have the tools they need to achieve their wildest dreams. That's why I was running. Kraft says now the Republican Party must unite to defeat Governor Andy Bashir. So despite attack ads on the campaign trail, she's now signaling her support for Daniel Cameron. In Lexington, Bobby McSwine, WHAS 11, on your side. And there were several other statewide races on the ballot to set up the matchups for November. One of those races is Kentucky Secretary of State. Republican Michael Adams will be able to defend his seat in November, easily winning 64% of the vote. He's going to face Democrat Buddy Wheatley, who's a former state representative from Covington, who ran unopposed. In the race for Agriculture Commissioner, Sierra Enloe defeated Mikhail Malone with 59% of the vote. She'll face Jonathan Schell, who secured the Republican nomination over Richard Keith. And if you would want to take a closer look at some of the results of the primary, you can download the WHS 11 app, click on primary results at the top of the page. All right, five minutes after six now, more local news for you. More than six years after two people were killed in South Louisville, a man is now convicted in their deaths. A jury found Daquan Lampkins guilty of several charges, including two counts of murder. Prosecutors say Lampkins fatally shot Delivia Caron and Ricky Jones in April of 2017 at an apartment on Kingston Avenue. Lampkins was Caron's ex-boyfriend, and she had an emergency protective order against him. 
Lampkins is facing life without parole. He'll be sentenced next week. JCPS teachers and administrators had a chance to see the weapon detection technology the district is bringing into schools. Representatives from Evolve were set up at Butler High School on Tuesday for the open house. These devices are different from metal detectors, instead looking for shapes resembling weapons. If something's detected, there would be a secondary search. Knight Middle School principal Chriselle Lanier said mobility was her concern because we probably won't have multiple devices. When you look at a campus like um, the one that we have here at Butler, where there are multiple buildings, I can see that adding a different challenge. Evolve is currently in more than 450 schools across 30 states, including Kentucky. JCPS plans to accept bids from other companies with similar technology before deciding on a provider.